walk-ins in the audience tonight? Anybody? No. You probably don't know that you are. Um, well, it's quite possible. A walk-in is actually somebody whose body has been taken over by an alien entity. Um, and apparently there's many of us, many of them are walking amongst us every day. I actually have a walk-in detector here. Um, I think it works. Um, I'll just demonstrate on the band, just so that you get an idea of what to look for. Is it toxic? Um, I don't think so. I can feel radioactive. Yes, you're very sensitive, Maureen. Yes, okay, that makes sense. It's you, Mr. Jiggle. Oh. Yes, that could, that could explain your um, chronic identity crisis, <laughs> actually. Um, anyway, so I, I can, uh, you can use this if you want at the end of the show. Um, Winnie Baker will have it at the door if you want to test yourself for being a walk-in or not. We haven't met and Winnie. Yes, we need our, our, our general dog's body and driver and very friendly door lady. Um, so if you want to get yourself tested, you can do that tonight. And if you don't know what to do about it, there is a walk-in support group. It's called Aliens Anonymous. And Winnie will have all of those contact details at the door. Um, but it's true. Apparently, aliens have been walking amongst us um, for many, many, well, decades, probably centuries. And in the summer of 74, I actually met one myself. Um, I was deep undercover um, in, a, uh, in a notorious uh, ethereal uh, bikey gang cult uh, called the Harley Krishnas. Um, I was riding with the Hogs and Hindis chapter, um, and they had this very charismatic leader, um, and my, my employers wanted me to get close to him, as close as I possibly could, because they, they thought he was suspicious. Um, anyway, he was incredibly charismatic. I've never seen or met anyone quite like him before. He was like a, a superstar. Actually, no, he was like a supernova. And he was surrounded by um, fawning minions. Um, and I must admit, I was quite taken with him. But in order to give myself an advantage, because he was very difficult to get near, um, in order to give myself an advantage, I managed to get my hands on a very rare copy of the, the Shirley MacLaine Guide to Intergalactic Coitus. <laughs> I don't know if anybody has read, read it, but um, yes. Uh, anyway, it had, had some rather interesting, uh, rather, rather some interesting suggestions. And it, the first tip was that I needed to get hold of a, a, a freestanding upright stick, um, approximately two feet in height, and uh, a collection of marine ply sizal hoops, approximately 10, cent uh, well, 10 inches in diameter. And I thought that was a bit strange, so I just checked the cover again and. Unfortunately, I I'd actually purchased the Shirley MacLaine Guide to Intergalactic Coits. Um, <laughs> but uh, strangely enough, um, this charismatic leader, who didn't actually have a name, he had a vibration. He didn't have a name, he had a vibration. Quite a, an impressive sonic, sonic marker, from what I remember. Um, he actually liked Coits, and so it worked. Um, <laughs> Um, and we got very close, and I fell completely and utterly under his spell, unfortunately. I, I must admit, I became quite obsessed, and I needed to be retrieved and deprogrammed and repatriated again. Um, and the last thing I actually remember is that he just left me. He left me. We had, he claimed that he came from the Dog Star Sirius uh, constellation. You know the Dog Star Sirius? So you could say that we had a, a serious relationship. Um, but he did, he left me, he left me one night on a windy hill in... In, in the far reaches of the Scottish Highlands, um, just in, a, in, a, in the, spe the speed of light. He just kind of left in some souped-up Ford Galaxy thing. Um, <laughs> disappeared into the clouds, and I haven't seen him since. And I must admit, I think about him every day. I actually have a photo of him. I'll show you. It was the only photo I was able to actually capture. Um, just to give you an idea of the extraordinary nature of this man, <laughs> or this, this entity. Yes, he claimed that his parents were actually two lonely gravitational waves that... Uh, crashed into each other after the uh, co collision of a couple of black holes in space one time. But anyway, yes, I think of him often and I hope one day that he comes back for me. On the wily, windy moors, we'd roll and fall in green. You had.
had a temper like my jealousy, too hot, too greedy. How could you leave me when I needed to possess you? I hated you. I loved you too. Bad dreams in the night. They told me that I was gonna miss your flight. Leave behind my wandering, wandering, wandering heights. E.T. It's me, I'm Kitty, a phone home. I'm so Slowly on the other side. I pile a lot, I find a lot. Falls throw without you. Please come back, cruelly tea. My one dream, my only master. Let me grab your soul away. Hey, ooh, let me have it. Let me grab your soul away. Hey, you know it's me, Kitty. Someone's phone. Is that someone's phone? No, phone's off, please. Is that for me, Winnie? Oh, here we go. This might be him. Oh my lord. I think it worked. Quick, Winnie, quick. How do I look? <laughs> That's the damn the upgrade. Um please. Have you opened this thing? Oh, very nice. <sighs> Hello, Miss Kitty. No, 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 I'm not. Um, no, this is not the Miss Kitty Cat Food Company, I'm sorry. No, sorry. Wrong number. Thanks, Winnie. Sometimes when this world gets kind of empty The sound of the breath fades with the light I think about the loveless fascination Under the Milky Way Tonight, lower the curtain down on me. Lower the curtain down, all right. I have no time for private consultation. Under the Milky Way tonight I wish 
It's something quite peculiar Something shimmering and white Leads you here Despite your destination Under the Milky Way tonight I'm out of 